Welcome or welcome back on Cisco. In this video, we're going to talk about graphing radical function. We're going to do a discovery activity. So first of all, let's take a look how uh, y equals square root of x or f of x equals square root of x looks like. We're going to use a table. And here, what kind of value we can use? Obviously, only positive, right? 0, square root of 0 is 0. Uh, 1, square root of 1 is 1, and you don't want to really use 2, right? You want to use 4, square root of 4 is 2, square root of 9 is 3, square root of 16 is 4. Right? We kind of have enough information now to make a picture, and yeah, we don't really need uh, um, all quadrants, we need just quadrant 1. 0 and 0 is right here, 1 and 1, 4 and 2, 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 9 and 3 and so on. This is square root of x, a function that's increasing all the time. It's defined only for positive value of x. The, the, that's the domain. The range is also only positive value. And you may want to think about more things uh, <coughs> regarding square root of x. Uh, you can see the same picture here. We know how square root of x looks like. What about square root of x plus 2? And again, we can use a table. And we have now x equals 0, we're going to end up with 2. x equals 1, we're going to end up with 3. x equals 4, right? Uh, square root of 4 is 2 plus 2 is 4. And let's do one more, 9. Right? Square root of 9 is 3 plus 2, 5. Okay? Um, what about the other one? The other one, we can do the same thing. Okay, 0, we're going to end up with negative 3. Uh, if we have 1, we're going to end up with negative 2. If we have 4, square root of 4 is 2 minus 3, negative 1. If we have 9, square root of 3 is is uh, 3 minus 3 is 0. Oh, that's it will be the x intercept, right? We can see that on also on GeoGebra. If we plot the points, we get what we just have in the table. And you notice know, this was the parent graph, the one we start with, right? Um, square root of x. This is square root of x, right? And this one. Uh, this one, sorry, let's let's have the right color. This one will be this if we plot. And uh, yeah, let me go back on red. This red will be this. Okay. You notice the same transformation like some other function. Um, the plus two is gonna move up the graph, right? And a minus three is gonna move down the graph three units. What about this one? Again, we can use a table if you want. X, Y. Now, here you need to be careful. I will start with negative 2. Start with the value that make the quantity under the square root 0, right? Negative 2 plus 2 is 0. That will be 0. Then uh, the next one I will go with is negative 1. Negative 1 plus 1 is 1. Square root of 1 is 1. Uh, is this 0 a good one? Not really, because we end up with square root of 2. Uh, is it 1 a good one? No. But well, we can go to 2. 2 plus 2 is 4, square root of 4 is 2. And we do have enough information to graph that one. Again, the same for the number 4, if you're going to use a table. right? So what should I start with? And if you say 3, 3 is the 1, right? Then we're going to end up with 0. Um, and here the next one will be 4, all right, 4 minus 1 is 3, square root of 1 is 1, and the next one will be uh, 7, right, 7, 7 minus 3 is 4, and that will be 2. If we plot this, all this, we get this, this uh, uh, two graphs, right, so uh, let me use the right color, right, uh, the blue one is, uh, is this one, Oh, this is the red one. I'm sorry. This is the red one. Oops. The red one. The red one. This one is here, right? And 
we see we switch the units to the uh, right and the blue one which goes with this table and again we can see that transformation rigid transformation right? move three units right three units two units left <clears throat> just because we have plus two and minus three <clears throat> what about this one? If you notice, let's try to do it without uh, using a table. We have a minus 2 here, right? So then minus 2 it tells us that it moves right to units, right? Right to units. And this plus 3 tells us that it moves up 3 units. What about this one? Number 6. That one would need will move left, left, two units. This negative three says we move down, down, three units. Let's let's see if they are correct. Let's see the what's going on. Yeah, if you take a look, uh, the first one, number five, it's move like I said, right two units, right from here. Right two units, two units up. The graph is the same like the parent graph y equals square root of x. And number six, this one, right, is move left two units and three units down, and this is the same shape. Okay, so these are all rigid transformation. This one, what are what we call non rigid transformation. Why we have number in front. Right, so this number in front will change the shape, will make it different. Look at here, look at here. Uh, so, um, we can take a look here. So, the green one is the parent graph, y equal square root of x, right? The blue one here is number seven, right? Uh, if you notice, this is the one we have here which is high quality geometry right so this one is what is move one right because it's minus one four up because it's plus four right so you see that one and four but also it's flipped because we have a negative it's flipped and because of that number is more than one you know i will use a, a, a different way it's getting Add up right there, the green one. Okay. For number eight, which is the red one, what's going on here? We still have minus one and plus four, right? So moving left, right, and up. So we're still here, right? This point is moving one and four, and this is the graph, right? Right. But this one, if you notice, is skinnier than the uh, uh, the parent graph. Why it's skinnier? Because of the one half. That one half is going to compress the graph towards the x axis. Okay, these are the transformation. These are the rigid transformation. Right? Down, up, right, left. Hey, this will reflect over the x-axis. You see this one? Yeah, it's going to reflect it over the x-axis. And then this one is going to reflect it over the y-axis. Very important. All these transformations do not change the shape. as a reason we call them rigid. And the other one, we call them non-rigid transformation. And we, we saw this vertical stretch, right? That was when we have that positive 2, right? I mean, it was a negative 2. That's uh, and we switch it. And also we had the other choice uh, where we have um, um, vertical showing, and I said compressed towards the x axis. And the other two are very similar as an idea uh, with the other one. Now you have the number inside of the square root that's called horizontal ring and horizontal stretch. If you if you enjoyed this video clip, don't forget to click the like button and come back and see for more math video clips. Thank you.